Hello! Today we're gonna explore the all new version of our charts, version 3.0, so without further ado, let's get into it. This was a lot of work for the team, and we truly believe that it can help you with your monitoring and troubleshooting needs. A quick note before the video. Our exploration of the charts will happen on the Nadata demo space, which you can find the link down in the description, where you can also do pretty much anything that we will do today. So head down in the description and click that link to get a live demo of Nadata. So this is a Nadata chart. Um, you got the title bar, you got the definition bar with all the fields, you got the anomaly rate ribbon, you got the toolbar, then you got the chart area, and then you have the legend with the dimensions. So let's start from top to bottom explaining what all the new features are. So first of all, we got the title bar here, which it has some things that you might be familiar with, but now you can select two more new uh, chart types. You got stack bar, and then you got multibar. So as you can see, these can help visualizing better the data into different bars in the multibar. And then in the stack bar, you can see, you know, what um, each dimension contributes. So now let's move to the definition bar of the chart. Here it is where it really takes off in this update. We have developed the Niddle framework, standing for nodes, instances, dimensions, and labels, to help you instantly understand and validate the data you see in the chart. So as you see right here, I'm looking at data from 12 of the 13 nodes that are contributing to each chart. I'm looking at 12 systems, 9 of 10 dimensions, and then I got two uh, labels. So these fields give you information without even interacting with them. You don't need to press anything. It's always there on every chart. And each of them has a dropdown. So let's dive into the dropdowns now. So let's go to the first dropdown. That is the group by field. So over here, what do we see is that we got a lot of options in how we want to group the metrics. So we can group by one or multiple groupings. And we do have group by node system, which is instance. Um, the name of the instance always gets replaced. So if we we're seeing disks, it will be disks. If we're seeing interfaces, it will be interfaces. Uh, right now we're seeing system. Then we can group by dimension and then group by labels. Um, the nice thing about this is that you can group with multiple things so I can see dimensions and then per node. So if I go back to the chart, it's going to become a bit hectic <laughs> because we're seeing 12 nodes and for each of them 12 nodes, we're seeing all the nine dimensions that they got. So, you know, a lot of dimensions. So for example, what you can do with this dropdown is if we go to Kubernetes containers, we can see that on the CPU usage within the limits chart, we have one dimension used. So this is for all the containers. Now, as you can see, we got three of the four nodes. We could get 55 containers and only one dimension. What we can do is we can group by label and then select Kubernetes namespace. So what this will do is it will give us a dimension per namespace. So we can drill down a bit better and pivot the data set. You know, instead of like having, let's say one dimension, we, you can pivot it and have all these now grouped by dimension and then by namespace. As you can see, its namespace has its own used dimension. So if we switch to stack bar type, we can get a better picture of what's happening. We can see that the Redis and the Postgres namespace is used a bit more uh, than the rest. Um, but we'll get later into this uh, hover menu. So switching things up a bit, going to a different chart, we can see that the next field is the aggregate functions over data sources field. So what this field does is it applies a function over the data source. So this is a composite chart. So it doesn't only have like one received and one sent, right? Dimensions, it has multiple. So it has to like group them together in a way to make per se five metrics for the same second, make them into one so it can present it to you in the dashboard. Moving on, we go to the nodes dropdown. So what we can see here is a list of all the nodes that are contributing metrics to this chart. So here we're presented with a lot of valuable info. We can see that we got how many instances the node has, how many metrics the node has, and then the contribution of the node to the volume of the whole chart. So we can see that the data parent is 11.77% of the whole volume of the chart. We can see then anomaly rate, which in this case is zero. Then we got current alerts and some other uh, statistical values, minimum, average, and maximum in the units uh, of the chart. You can order by anything you want on this uh, view. You can order by volume, 
anomaly rate, alerts, minimum, average, maximum, whatever you want to get a better view of these. One other nice feature of this view is that you can actually filter. You can select which nodes you want to see. So for example, I want to see only the first two nodes. I want to see metrics for them. So now it says that we got two nodes and four out of 30 interfaces. And we can see again the dimensions. Now to take it a step further, we could also group by node. That what will give me, and if we change again to maybe stack bar, it will give me a dimension for each node. And within that, it will be two dimensions that sent the received. So if we were comparing traffic between the Nginx node and the Apache node, we can see that the Nginx node has more traffic uh, than the Apache one. So in similar fashion, we can move on to the instances dropdown, which is kind of the same with the nodes, just for instances. So what we can do here is we can say that I, I just want to see one node. So it has 36 instances, in this case, 36 containers. And then I want to see, per se, the first two containers. Now we can see that the volume is relatively high. You know, we wouldn't like select something very low. So now we can see that we got uh, from one node two containers contributing to the utilization dimension. Now, if we go and group by instance, we can get dimensions for each container of the utilization. Again, you can visualize this any way you want. Um, but you can see how we went from three nodes, 56 containers, and like only one dimension to drilling down to what two containers do, you know, like in comparison to each other. So the options here are, you know, uh, unlimited. So the next drop down is dimensions, which works in a similar manner. You can go and select one dimension. So maybe I want to see what happens um, in the user. And let's say in let's group by uh, node and select um, the reddish one and the Postgres one. So I want to see what happens in the user dimensions on these nodes, maybe because, you know, here I've set up like uh, something to happen, you know, recurringly. Um, and I want to see how it does. And then what I can do is I can select even more dimensions. So I can say, okay, let's see what system does for these two. So now dimensions are four. You can visualize any way you want. Um, I tend to like stack bar for some of these. So you can see like, you know, the actual size of the of the bar fragment and understand, you know, how big um, the difference is. And then again, you can see you may be wanting to sort by anomaly rate and see, okay, you know, which dimension has like the most anomaly rate. We can see that the system dimension has 0.22 anomaly rate while the rest don't. So we can unselect user and observe that we'll go to this in a bit. We got some anomalies going on here. So next is the labels uh, dropdown, which it allows us in a scenario where, you know, let's say we want to see some metrics about our disks. Um, we got 12 nodes, 54 disks. So maybe I want to like drill down my view, see only the physical disks, you know, what the physical disks do. Um, I can see that we got some anomalies. And then we can go down to the virtual ones and see what the virtual disks do. Maybe I got a setup where I know that the virtual disks should be doing some uh, work you know some uh, back and forth between them what you can then do is per se i want to see all the disks that have a label with nvme 0 and 1 so this will present me if we go to the disks drop down as you see all the instances here have the name nvme 0 and 1 what this does is they got a label with their name so i'm filtering with disk name over here i can go again to say nvme 1 and one. This will bring other, another amount of disks because as you see, the instance name changes in its uh, NVMe one and one. So last but not least is the aggregate functions over time period field, which you might also be familiar with that, um, applies a function when the amount of points on the screen are less than the, than the database can provide. So what this means right now, it doesn't do something because it is every one second, right? Uh, the, the points on the screen can actually be represented by the database and it's one to one. What happens though, when I zoom out, right? A second cannot like fit on this resolution. Like the database has even more metrics. So what it does, it takes the average for every three seconds and makes that one point. And that's better, you know, for 
viewing like um, past metrics, it can help because you don't really have like all the uh, space in the screen to make one point uh, a second. It's just not possible. So we, there has to be some function applied. So this can help you, for example, we can see, uh, let's see the standard deviation, uh, how far like point was from the average. We can see that, you know, uh, looking back at the metrics, there has been some spikes here. You can use this to drill down on uh, big time frames where you're not really having the pixel space to present one uh, point as one second. So if after all this, you've completely messed up your view, you don't know what you're looking at because you've done so many filterings, you can always hit the reset button and it will reset to the defaults in all the definition bar. So let's move to the next feature, which is very handy. What this is, the anomaly rate ribbon, we call it. Um, it gives you the anomaly rate, which we had previously in many other places. We decided that it would be best to put it above the metrics um, so you can hover and see for each dimension of the chart, what's the anomaly rate of it. Now, this feature uses our unsupervised machine learning algorithm. It does not slow down the data and the way it works, it does not even incur a disk footprint penalty. So for example, here, I can see that the model for this particular chart knows that probably the reads shouldn't be all that high. So when you see some spikes, it says, okay, you know, Take a look, as we can see here, uh, the color is the same because the value is sort of like the same. It's nine and then we got 16, which is a bit more bright. It might not be visible on the screen. So what you can see here is the color of it changes that similar to how a heat map would, uh, would react. So if you have like, you know, low anomaly rate, it will be kind of purple. Um, the more the anomaly rises, you see here, we got a hundred percent anomaly rate. Um, it's going to become, you know, uh, sort of a pink, you know, lavender color. Um, this helps, you know, even at a glance without, it, without hovering, you can know that, you know, this point here and that point here have, may need your attention. You know, it's something that is out of the ordinary for this particular chart. So the next feature, you might have already seen it in the video yeah, because it's very useful and like it's essential uh, at this point is when you hover, there's an overlay uh, displaying the dimension value, right? And the anomaly rate value. So while this happens, obviously this will remind you of this one because it's the same, right? When I hover, the thing that changes is when I'm on the anomaly ribbon, I'm probably looking for anomalies. So I want them, I want the dimensions to be sorted by anomaly rate. When I go to the chart, you know, the dimensions will be sorted by value. So what you can see here, it's perfect because you can like scroll the points around and like see, let's say I want to go to this spike here. I can actually see at a glance sorted, you know, what um, the dimensions are doing. So users first, system the second, and then, you know, you got all the other dimensions. And then if I want to go up and hover, I can also see that, you know, by anomaly rate. Now this would help in a scenario where, you know, you would have like a lot of anomaly rates, right? So for example, here I get two, right? And I want to sort them um, by the anomaly rate because if I was hovering here, they're nowhere to be found. It's a lot of dimensions and none of them has anomaly rate. Now, if I hover above, it will bring those zero value, which you know would normally be on the bottom, it will bring them up. In this overlay, you can also see what's the timestamp of the point you're hovering on. This, uh, for example, on me, it's Thursday, May 11th. 23 and then you got the full time and the seconds which is very important and the granularity if i was to zoom out if you recall with this field of the definition bar now i got a granularity of one second but a viewpoint of the average of the two seconds because it's aggregating the metrics to fit on the screen so as you can see when i'm here i can also sort by the info column if i hover on the bottom of the chart that has a blue in this case a blue um color indicating the blue tag of the partial data. Um, so I can see that some dimensions have partial data, not, you know, full. So as you can see with all those new features, you can now pivot the data set that you got on your charts in any way you want, filter by pretty much anything you would want, and you can get valuable info by just looking at the chart without interaction. And when you go into interact, you get even more information at your hands. So that's it from us. We would like to hear your opinion on these new charts. So you can head down this description and find all our social places. 
thank you very much for watching. This was a lot of work for the team and we truly believe that it can help you with your monitoring and troubleshooting needs. Make sure to follow us on the social places that we got in the description. There, you will also find a link to the release notes and to the video presenting the highlights of these release notes. And as always, stick around for more.